Welcome to Raiders on the Record, the podcast featuring Hastings High School Athletics. I'm Athletic Director Trent Hansen. My colleague Tim Hanneberg and I work together to bring you the stories of Raiders sports. We are thrilled to share conversations with the athletes, coaches, and alumni that represent Raider Nation. Check back weekly and be sure to share this podcast with your friends in the Raiders Network. Aaron Herber is a senior at Hastings High School and is a 2023 Raider graduate. Throughout high school, he has participated in numerous sports such as football from 9th to 10th grade, cross country from 10th to 12th grade, alpine ski from 7th to 12th grade, and baseball from 9th to 12th grade. Aaron has been all conference in alpine skiing and is a four time state qualifier. This year, he hopes to qualify again and become all state. Aaron has great insight into the positive roles coaches can play in an athlete's life. All right, here we are with Aaron Herber. Aaron, we always start at the beginning of people's lives here. So let's hear about your family, uh, brother, sisters, mom, dad. Did you always grow up in Hastings? Did you eventually move to Hastings? Uh, so let's hear about you growing up. Uh, let's hear all about Aaron Herber. So I have an older sister named Julia. She uh, goes to River Falls. Uh, she graduated in 2020. And uh, I have two dogs. Their both names are Pax and Bear. They're both Mindy Schnauzers. Um, always lived in Hastings. In the same house, on the same street. So, yeah. And then uh, my mom and dad are both educators. Uh, my dad's a principal at Park High School. And then my mom's a teacher at the middle school perfect next one that we always like to hear from our guests here especially current athletes like you are the schools you attended here in hastings also talk about any teachers that really had a positive impact you don't have to go year by year if you want but is there any teachers at each school that had a positive impact on you as well and i always like sending these podcasts out to those teachers and giving them a little shout out so uh, once again let's hear about each school you attended here in hastings and then the teachers at had a positive impact on you at each level? Um, so I attended Chris McAuliffe and then uh, Hastings Middle School and I'm now at the high school. Um, I'd say elementary teacher that had a really big impact on me was uh, my fourth grade teacher, Mr. Papp. Uh, he just promoted kindness and uh, um, uh, integrity. Um, then I would say a uh, teacher at the middle school would be uh, – Mr. Fox, my fifth grade math teacher, uh, he was just always positive and uh, find, like found a way to shine brightness all the time. And then uh, um, I'd say high school would probably be, be it's tough because there's so many like people that have like helped me through. Um, I'd say Mr. Corkish, because he's always pushing you to like push yourself almost. And then uh, I'd say probably D Wall too, because he's always just funny and just always has a smile on his face. Nice. So let's hear about your sports journey. This is uh, mainly a sports podcast. So we always like hearing our, our guests talk about the sports they played. Uh, so talk about the sports you played growing up uh, and then. I usually like to stop around seventh or eighth grade. I always say the same thing. That's when people get more serious about sports. Sometimes boys and girls start getting brought up to the JV or the varsity level. So uh, let's hear about once again, the sports you played growing up and then we could stop around seventh or eighth grade. All right. So I played T-ball up through whenever you stop playing T-ball and then, uh, I played basketball from kindergarten to th second grade. And then I still continued baseball through all the way up till now. And then uh, I started uh, ski racing in third grade. And then in middle school, I played uh, football. Um, yeah. And I played a uh, 
uh, baseball with middle school too and traveling baseball. Perfect. So like I was just saying, let's start in seventh grade. It usually makes sense to go each year and then we'll start in the fall, winter, and then uh, spring. So let's start in the fall of seventh grade. You can walk through each year. Uh, we like hearing about um, any major accomplishments with yourself or the team. Uh, so if your team did something kind of special that year, let's hear about that. If you, there's a lot of individual sports as well. So if you did anything kind of special individually, let's hear about that as well. And then any major awards or kind of recognition that goes along with that year, uh, captain, all state, all conference, things of that nature. So uh, starting in seventh grade, fall, let's kind of work our way all throughout the high school year senior right now. And we're in the fall season. So let's kind of go from seventh grade fall all the way to 12th grade fall. All right. So seventh grade, I, I played football and uh, uh, something from that season was our team went undefeated. Uh, I thought that was pretty special because when you went undefeated, you just feel like you're on top of the world and it's always, you're always feeling great. And then uh, during the winter, I was on the Alpine ski team. Um, I won my first JV race first my first ever high school race I won which was a JV race and then I think I won the next two and then I fell in the fourth one and then I got pulled up to varsity after my fall which I thought was pretty cool because I mean it's your first time in varsity and you're in seventh grade mm -hmm. um it was an invite up at wild mountain that was the race um and then, yeah, but then I got moved back down because it was weird because it was a snow week dance. So they, all the seniors weren't there that night. So I got to get pulled up for that. And then they all came back. So I got bumped back down. <laughs> so that pretty much ended that season. I didn't make the section team, but our that year, our boys team and girls team won sections and they headed up to state that year. Um, unfortunately it didn't work out for them, but they still had a blast. Um, and then spring in seventh grade, I broke my collarbone, uh, doing the pond skip at Welch village. So I didn't play baseball that spring, but I did do traveling baseball in the summer. Nice. And then eighth grade fall was, uh, football again. And we went, we lost one game that year, and it was to Simley, Simley Middle School. And they, they were good. Um, yeah. And then uh, going into winter of eighth grade, I made a permanent spot on varsity. And then I was probably, I think I was top 10 most of those races. And then we, uh, I made it to the sections team and I got, it was pretty cool. Cause I thought that I missed sections or, uh, the state qualifying spot by one spot, but then they called my name on. I was actually two spots up ahead where I thought I was. So I qualified for state and then head up there for, uh, the state meet. I think I got like 50th, but it was just so cool being up there. For sure. And then spring of eighth grade, we, I was on, I did school ball with the middle school. Um, and we did all right. I don't remember our record though. Now we had a winning record. That's all. And then, uh, fall of ninth grade, I played football. Um, and it was just, I was, I loved it. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was just always positive. Everyone's always pushing yourself to be best you can be. Um, I think we had a neutral record, but we didn't, it, did, it seemed like we didn't care what our record was. We were just out there working hard and, uh, supporting each other. And then going into winter of ninth grade, again, I was still skiing. And then 
I think I was I was top five most of the races, and I got all conference that year. Um, and then sections, I missed an, an I missed the individual qualifying spot for state, but our team uh, beat out um, Woodbury for the second place spot, so we qualified for state that way. And I still got to go up there and ski. I think I was like 37th that year. Making improvements. I like to hear that. That's always good. And then, uh, let's see, spring of ninth grade year, we were two weeks into baseball and then COVID hit. And then that shut everything down. Mm -hmm. I think I still played summer ball, but it was like, all we did was practice. We had no games. And then going into 10th grade year got interesting because it was supposed to be that football was supposed to be in the spring. So I decided that I would join cross country because I just didn't feel like not doing anything for a whole like season of sports. But then like, I think it was like two weeks into the cross country season, they uh, moved football back to the fall. So I was like torn, like, what do I do? Because Mm -hmm. I committed to the cross country team. I don't want to like say like, oh, sorry, I'm going to play football now. But I also like made a commitment to play football. So I talked to Mr. Strain and he's like, you got to finish your commitment to cross country. So um, I finished off the season with them. I made the sections team, got third to last (laughs) because pretty (laughs) slow. But um, but I went and finished out uh, with the football team. I was on a B squad, and I think I played like two games. Don't remember what the score was, but it was it was just fun being back in football. And then going into tenth grade for skiing, uh, I was battling out for the one two three spot with my teammates. We were just all pushing each other to get faster. Um, and then going into sections, it was weird because they split the sections race into two races. So there was a morning and afternoon race. Um, uh, Hastings was in the morning race. So there was like 10 teams instead of 20 teams. So I think our boys team missed qualifying for state by like three points, which is like very minimal. But me and a fellow teammate, Cole Kateri, got first and second in the individual rankings. Um, so we, we headed up to state. And then uh, I think, yeah, Abby Palavuk also qualified that year. So all three of us headed up there. Wait, no. She broke her back that race. Oh, yeah. So no, she, she didn't qualify. That was the year after. So as me and Cole headed up to state that year, uh, I think I got, I was 21st. I missed all state by one spot. And I know the guy who kicked me, who, <laughs> who beat me out too, which is kind of funny, but um, I think Cole got like 35th. And then heading into 10th grade year for baseball, uh, it was kind of fun. Uh, it was just, we just kind of messed around a lot and uh, we were still doing well. I think we, we had a winning record that year. I recognize that I'm not very good at baseball. <laughs> so, but I still like playing baseball. This is not as not as good as I would like to be, but I feel like that's a lot of people. Yeah, then, for sure. Uh, I think that happens with a lot of people with a lot of sports. So yeah. <laughs> and then uh, going into eleventh grade, I decided to quit football because my true passion is skiing, and I've just seen a lot of people just get absolutely really hurt in football and I was like I don't want to risk like blowing a knee out uh doing something that I just like kind of like doing 
Um, so I quit football and decided to stick with cross country. And then we had a lot of fun that year. Uh, the seniors, the captains, um, Ty Bush, Tommy and Steven, all they're just like really fun to be around. They're always joking with each other and building a positive like team atmosphere. And then, uh, and then I qualified for the sections team again. Um, got second to last, but I also PR'd that race. I ran a 1905, 19 minutes and five seconds for a 5K, which is like 40 seconds faster than I've ever ran one. And then uh, going into winter of 11th grade, I still skiing. Um, let's see. Me and Jackson Rents, who are also, he's a other guy from Hastings I ski with, and uh, we were always competing for that one two spot uh, for the meets. And uh, let's see, going to sections, our team won the race by like, honestly, it was like 50 points. We just absolutely crushed it. And uh, uh, Jackson got first and I got second. So at the sections for individual. And then uh, I think Kulkateri got like, I think it was seventh or eighth place. Um, yeah, and then going into 11th grade for baseball. All right, I'll just go back. At State last year, I uh, – I was going good. I was sitting in like 15th place after the first run. So in skiing, there's two runs per race. And I was sitting in 15th, the first run. And then uh, second run, I fell at a spot that I knew I needed to watch out for. And I was just kicking myself because I like knew what was going to happen if I didn't do a certain thing. And I did the thing that I shouldn't have done. And uh, I fell. And then I got second to last. I still finished. So, yeah. Our boys team kind of struggled last year, too. We uh, kind of fell apart uh, after the second run, or after the first run. And then, uh, yeah. Um, then going into baseball season, uh we did. We had a really good season last year. We lost uh, five games. I think we were nineteen and five. Um, I was on JV. Oh, the JV and varsity. We always went to the same games. Um, when we got to sections, I uh, didn't make the uh, roster spot, so. Uh, my coach, Ryan Stoffel, he uh, put me on as a manager to keep me involved with the team, which I was very thankful for because, yeah, because I just got to be with the team and hang out with the boys. Um, so, yeah, then that's pretty much junior year. And heading to senior year, still running cross country. It's been hot. <laughs> uh, it's not really fun to run in the heat, but, yeah. yeah. So we just had this. Our, I think this is our fourth meet we had on Tuesday at Hudson. It was like ninety-two degrees, and it was stupid hot. But uh, I think I came in twenty-second for the senior because it was split up into freshman, junior, seniors for the races, and I came in twenty-second for the seniors and like sixty-sixth overall, which is like middle of the pack, which I was pretty pumped about. So, yeah, that's pretty much it up till now. So we got alpine ski coming up here in the winter. We got baseball coming up in the spring. Those seasons haven't happened yet, obviously, but are you looking forward to anything or have any kind of major goals coming up with those two sports? Uh, do you, Obviously, I'm guessing you're, you, you plan on playing both sports, but uh, just talk about any goals you have with each of those sports individually or as a team. Um. So... For alpine skiing, I'm going to try my best not to fall <laughs> during uh, sections. 
And if I qualify for state, I'm going to try out my best not to fall then. And uh, I'm hoping to get an all-state spot. And then I think our team has a legitimate chance of winning the state meet if we all do amazing. Because there's a t there, uh, the team that won last year was all juniors. And they're a really solid team. But it's ski racing and anything can happen. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think we have a chance. Um, and then for baseball, I'm going to try to not strike out <laughs> <laughs> as much as I did last year. Yeah, one thing I found out too, uh, I did not know this about Alpine Ski, was that obviously you talked about it, you have two runs. But yep. then if you fall down in one of the runs, you're disqualified for the meet too. Is that correct? Or how's that work? So if, if one of your skis falls off, you can finish, but if both fall off, you're done. You're disqualified. Okay. So if you fall, you can still, you have to hike back up to where, so there's gates and you have to hike back up to the gate that you fell down at and ski around it. And then you can finish unless both your skis fall off. Gotcha. That's crazy. So thinking about you, Aaron, uh, we talk about a lot of, uh, Mr. Hansen, our AD talks a lot about why we coach and test us all the time and challenges us. And we have to come up as, as coaches, we come up with why we coach. So turning that back around on our athletes. Now think about why you play different sports. So you talked about playing football, uh, baseball, alpine ski, and, uh, in cross country, obviously. So why do you play sports and why does sports play such a pivotal role in your life? Um, I play sports because, well, it's, I think it's different for each sport. Um, I run cross country because I like the team atmosphere. Like you're, I just get so much closer because it's such a small, it's a lot smaller team than like say skiing and baseball. Like well, this year's kind of an anomaly where we have, I think we have like 20 guys and like 17 girls. A lot of those are freshmen, but if you go back to last year, it was like we had 12 guys on the team. He just got so close with each one of them. And he just both had like a tight bond with everyone. And then I ski race because it's like, it's a true passion of mine. I love doing it. Like I could be out skiing all day long. I do ski all day long. <laughs> um, I just enjoy going fast and, uh, yeah, I mean, the ski team, uh, it's an individual sport, which I like because you don't have to like rely on other people to succeed, but there's still like that team aspect, which you have to do well to help your team do well. Um, I play baseball, uh, because it's such a, like, let's go get them attitude. Um, everyone there wants to get better all the time. Um, and uh, my mom likes watching me play baseball, so I play baseball. <laughs> You've played four different sports here at high school too now, Aaron. So think about one of your favorite moments or favorite experiences as a high school athlete. So um, if you have a couple from a couple different sports, you can talk about that, but what do you think one of your favorite moments has been so far as a Raider athlete? Um, I'd say my favorite moment was when, oh, let's see, in ninth grade, when our boys team qualified for state, we won, I think we qualified, we beat them out by like three points or something. It was such a small margin that when they announced the third place team and we knew that we got like second, you would have thought like we were excited that we got third place. Mm -hmm. And then when they announced Hastings for second place, it was like, Oh yeah. But it was energy was so high and it was, it's hard to explain that like how like much that meant to all of us. Um, it was just such a, we're all just so excited. And then say another uh, memory would be um, 
was after practice one day for baseball last year when uh ryan stoffel told me that i didn't make the sections roster um but then he emailed me and asked if i wanted to be a captain because he said that he rec he uh noticed my ability to be loud and cheer and i just felt like that was kind of a special thing that he like wanted me to be a manager for that so that's pretty special that's great another thing that trent hansen always asks us as coaches is to define define success and he challenges us a lot and uh, we have to do a lot of different times in a lot of different ways so turning that back around on you guys as athletes, how would you define success? And once again, it could be a couple different things with a couple different sports, or if you have maybe a uh, kind of broad uh, definition of success for you as an athlete, let's hear about that. So I would define success a couple different ways for sports, for different sports. So for cross country, I would define it as um, just improvement in general, just Maybe you beat your previous time by like a second or two. I mean, I feel like in my head that's success. I mean, you know, I'm not very fast. Mm -hmm. I'm coming in like second to last, third to last at sections. But each time I've ran those races, I've learned something new about myself, about how hard I can push myself. And I feel like that's kind of what success is, is knowing how far you can push yourself to achieve what you can achieve or knowing what you can achieve and then I, for skiing i kind of find it as the same way because you got to put in like the work to get better like you're not just going to get better uh going to practice you really got to put the time in outside of practice i feel like that's like it for any sport and to be successful, you got to, you got to want it. So Aaron, you've played four different sports here at Hastings high school. You've had a lot of different coaches here at Hastings and growing up as well. I know it's almost an impossible thing to pick maybe the best coach that you've ever had, but if you want to pick a couple different coaches for each sport, that's more than okay. So talk about the coaches you've had and maybe once again, pick that best coach, someone that really made a huge positive impact on your life, or maybe someone that taught you something that's really stuck with you and you're going to take with you for the rest of your life. So who do you think that coach is in your life? Ooh. I'd say I have a couple coaches that have like uh, taught me different things. So I'm going to go back to my traveling baseball years during like fifth grade. I had a coach named Jake Miska and he taught us that you always show up 15 minutes early and you always work hard. And that's kind of stuck with me for pretty much my whole life. I always show up 15 minutes early to everything and I always work as hard as I can to help other people or in sports or yeah. Um, and then I would say another coach that had a great impact on me was uh, uh, my, one of my scariest and coaches, his name is Gary Flagger. Uh, he coached. Uh, he coached it at. Um, oh shoot! I don't remember where he coached high school at, but he uh, uh, coached out at Afton Alps, and uh, he's always pushed me because he. I think he saw something. He always pushed me to, like, stay after a little bit longer, like ten, fifteen minutes, and he would always explain different parts of the course and why they're set that way and how to ski them and um, things like that. And then I would say one of my, hmm, there's just so many good coaches I've had. I would say another coach would be uh, Jason Gergen, my current Alpine skiing coach, because he's always pushing us to be better. Um, it's always motivating us to uh, ski within yourself, but know where you can push yourself. Um, and then I would say lastly would be Ryan Stoffel because 
he made you feel part of the team no matter what your role was. And I think that's huge and very important for building a successful team. For sure. Now I'm thinking about the same kind of question now, but for the guys that you're playing along with, alongside with. So uh, it could be football, it could be cross country, uh, it could be baseball, and it could be alpine ski. So think about a teammate who's had a really big positive impact on your life. And I always bring up the same kind of things too. This could be someone that has really challenged you. And you already brought up a couple names earlier about those guys that you've kind of skied and been that one, two person with uh, on the team. So it could be that person that is kind of pushing you to higher limits uh, throughout the entire year. It could be someone that uh, was in maybe an older athlete on the team that you really looked up to and you kind of try to idolize them and, and work up to their level. Uh, or it could be someone that um, was that shoulder that you cried on, you know, that someone that you could always go to when you're having a hard time. You always could turn to them and they always gave you uh, good advice and kind of set you in the right direction. So who do you think that teammate is for you, Aaron? And once again, you're a multi-sport athlete. So if you got a couple different people from different sports, uh, that's a okay. So once again, who do you think that teammate is in your life? I'll start off with cross country. Um, I think a teammate that really uh, helped me out was um, Ty Bush. Um, Cause he's such a positive personality. He's always pushing you, pushing you to be better. Um, he's always like just happy to be wherever he is. Um, and I, I kind of like changed my outlook on cross country cause it's not that fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you really love running, which I, I don't know if I really do. I really don't know anybody that truly loves it, Aaron. I'm, I'm sure there's some people that say it and I think they're liars, but anyway. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, he just made you want to like show up to practice and run. So, and then throw back to seventh grade. I had a captain. His name's uh, Jack Kateria. Um, and he was someone that would always come up to me and congratulate me or um, just like pat me on the back if I fell or he was always just there and he just kind of they put in just, I didn't realize this till like probably 10th or 11th grade about how much of an impact that had of an upperclassman reaching down to like a, like a seventh grader and like saying, it's okay that this happened or way to go. You just absolutely crushed it. So I think I'm going to try and implement that in because I'm, I'm a captain for a uh, cross country and Alpine. I'm going to try and, work on that more about uh, reaching down to uh, younger classmen. And then I'd say my last person would be um, Jackson Rents because uh, he's the guy he's, my, he's the guy that I'm trying to beat. Um, and uh, he's always pushing himself and that pushes me to like push myself to push him. I don't know, mm -hmm. but he's, he's just my competition and I always want to try and beat him. And he's always trying to beat me. And it's, it's kind of fun to see who's going to win that race or who's faster, this runner who can get their boots on the fastest. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah. I like it. Another question I always like to ask our, our current athletes, is an opponent or event that they always look forward to or it brings out the best in them. And I really like this one because um, depending on the sport that we, uh, that the athlete plays, we always hear different uh, kind of opponents and different events and uh, kind of throughout the years interviewing alumni as well. It's kind of funny how, or, or it's kind of interesting, I should say, to see how those teams change and how these rivalries kind of change. So uh, once again, turning the question on you, Aaron, is there any opponent or event that you really look forward to? Um, and this could be different for every single sport, you know, one for cross country, uh, maybe an event or a, an opponent. I would say maybe those individual sports, like a lot of them that you play, it might be an event that you always look forward to that always brings out the best in you guys. And maybe for baseball, it might be uh, an opponent that really brings out the best in you. So once again, if you want to pick one for each sport, that's great. Uh, if you want to just talk about one, that's okay too. So who do you think that is for you and why? I would say 
that a competition that I really enjoy would be for skiing. Uh, it's a we do an invite at Giants Ridge. The whole team goes up there, and we like we go up. We train the day before the race, and then we stay in a hotel overnight. And we're always it's a lot of fun because we'll do like shenanigans and stuff like that. And we won't get in trouble, but we'll we'll let's hang out and just have a good time. Um, and then a competition that brings out the best to me would probably be our sections race for skiing. Um, cause it's the best of the best in your area and you gotta, you gotta push yourself, but you can't push yourself so hard that you like make a mistake or fall down cause that can cost your team and like an individual spot as for like qualifying for state. Um, so yeah. I like it. Last couple of questions then for you, Aaron. And this is maybe, I always kind of bring this up, but, and I always say, maybe it's true. Maybe it's not true, but maybe the most important part of the interview here, talking about our coaches, talking to our, I should say our coaches, our parents and our student athletes uh, that, that are going to listen to this. So, First, we take our parents and our coaches, thinking about on all your experiences, your perspective. If you could give parents and coaches a couple pieces of advice, what do you think it would be and why? It's okay to let your kid fail because they need you need to fail once in a while to, one, maybe you need to humble yourself. Or two, you need that motivation to like maybe come back next year or work harder over the off season and build yourself up. Um, and if you if you don't let them fail, they'll never know how to fail later on in life. Like maybe they didn't get a job at a job interview and they've like never got like that's never happened to them before. Or maybe they didn't get into school that they wanted to get into. But I think sports, that's your place to fail in because it's high school sports. It's not the end of the world, even though it seems like it at the time. Gotcha. What about coaches? Any advice for coaches? Um, you, you've named a lot of that had a big positive impact on your life. If you could give them maybe just one piece of advice, and it could be failure too, you know, maybe letting your athletes fail. Uh, what do you think that piece of advice would be? I would say try try to create a positive environment where everyone feels accepted no matter their ability or um, their skill level, which is the same thing, but or their at like work ethic towards the sport because for me like baseball isn't my main sport. I just do it because I like hanging out with those guys and being a part of the team. But I don't I'm not the one staying after practice and getting those extra throws in, but I just, I still feel part of the team. Gotcha. So. Now thinking about student athletes and uh, I was just doing an interview with Mr. Fritzy. So we could think about this in a couple different ways. Uh, when it comes to student athletes, this could be maybe people that are your teammates right now, Aaron, and you're kind of talking to them, maybe a little younger than you. Or we could think about those guys that, or girls too, uh, that are younger, maybe middle school, that are going to be coming up in our high school program. So if you're talking to maybe uh, both sets of, of student athletes or maybe just one set, doesn't matter, really matter here. If you had to give those Raider athletes a couple pieces of advice, what do you think would be coming from you, a four sport high school athlete? What do you think that advice would be? Um, it's okay to not be in three sports because you are a student athlete first and or you are a student first. So, um, and you have to know, you don't have to be in a sport because your buddies are in it. Like for me, football is a place where my buddies were at, but I just really, I don't know if I enjoyed it and I didn't really want to injure myself. So I found another way to like get involved during the fall and that was cross country. Um, uh, I would say 
get involved, but don't be too involved to where you overdo it and are stressed out all the time. Perfect. Aaron, that's all the questions I got for you. The last thing we always do is just turn the mic over, microphone over to our guest. Uh, anything you want to add in, any questions I didn't ask you, any shout outs you want to give, uh, like I said, the microphone is yours and you can run for it. So like I said, go for it, Aaron. Um, I just want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to do this because I didn't know this was a thing before you emailed me and I was like, <laughs> It's kind of cool to like go because I you emailed me the YouTube link and I just like went back through all the some of the podcasts. I'm like, wow, I didn't know less about this person or that's interesting. Like hearing it from like a alumni of that skied or uh, like played football back in like the early 2000s or something like that. I just it was just interesting. Um, so I just want to thank you for the opportunity. Um. Uh, so worries we we got a lot of people people you named so far i already interviewed them and and they're out there so we can go back and listen right now so you talked about coach gergen uh, coach gergen I, I did an interview with him uh, you mentioned abby palava i always like to tease her she didn't have the best interview but she she got through it which is uh which is a huge thing uh i like teasing her a lot so she's on here you talked about ty bashinsky ties on here too and and there's a lot of other great cross country people uh, that have been on here. Uh, a lot of great baseball people. So uh, a lot of names too. So sorry, I interrupted Aaron. I told you the microphone is yours and I interrupted you, but <laughs> you can go for it now. Um, I think that's it. Perfect. Well, thank you, Aaron. I appreciate your time. All right. Thank you. 